Hey everybody, it's Jim. I wanted to make a quick video to show you something that showed up today via FedEx that I was really not expecting. And if you haven't noticed it already next to my head, it's this thing right here. This is the ghost whistle uh, from the new film Ghostbusters Afterlife that's been produced by Hasbro. And I did not expect to see this yet because I ordered it after finding it on the uh, Walmart website with a bunch of the Fright Features figures that had been listed for a couple of days. And then it disappeared from the website, and my order said it wasn't going to ship until August 1st. But lo and behold, uh, here it is on the 23rd of uh, July. So um, I have apparently get to hang around with this thing for Comic-Con weekend, which is kind of interesting. So um, we're going to take a look at it, and that way you can kind of get an idea of what it is, and that way folks who are interested in this might have a better idea of how it works uh, and what this thing is all about. So I uh, will spin around here real quick and flip camera and... What you'll notice here is that this is a, I don't know, I want to say maybe six inches tall, maybe six, seven inches tall. It weighs basically nothing. Uh, it's got a dial on it and it has advertised 15 different sounds uh, that it makes. If you look on the dial, there are a series of different uh, pictures drawn on there. There's a Slimer, there's a star, the square. Uh, those are the symbols that are from the original ESP cards, I think, from Ghostbusters from the first movie. There's a muncher in there, there's a, a Stay Puffed or a Mini Puffed, and there's a Terror Dog. Uh, so apologies for the shaky hands here as I'm showing you this stuff. Uh, but what's interesting about this is that you turn the knob and it chooses a different voice. Essentially, people have been talking about this as a voice changer. It really isn't. Uh, what it is, is just a sound playback device with a playlist of probably 15 different sounds in it and a series of different ghost voices. And so turning the knob selects a different voice out of the varied selections that are there. Uh, and then when you speak into the end of it, that triggers playback of a sound sample. So it doesn't convert your voice in any way. It's just the sound activated trigger. So we'll give this a shot to show you some folks how this works. So, uh, Right now I'm selected on, I believe, the star setting. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to the square setting. And that turns it on. I've had some different first sounds come out of it when I first use it, but if I get close to it and talk directly at it, hey, yo. What's up? Turning the knob to muncher. Hey! Yo! So, you'll get a bunch of different fart noises and different sounds that come out of it as you talk into it. Hello! Hey! Now, one thing I'll say is that I have gotten two different sounds on this thing to start. Um, so it's not always the same sound sample that plays on the same character on the dial. Uh, there doesn't really seem this to be a clear association between that. And if you turn the dial while a sound sample is in the middle of playing, the device has no idea. So it just continues to play its playback. And then when you turn to the next one, it plays the next sound sample. So the point here being that these little icons on the wheel don't really seem to correlate to specific to specific voices that play back as much as there's just a contiguous list of sound samples that are being played as this knob is turned and it's triggered. So to give you an idea of that again, this is the couple of wavy lines setting on here. So, hey, I've gotten those screams while set on the terror dog before. Now we're gonna switch to the stay puffed one. Hey. And that pipe banging noise is one that I've had pop up on different settings. So the point is, I won't sit here and go through all of these because that's uh, a lot of sounds to go through. But uh, this is about $15 if you haven't seen one yet, haven't picked one up. It's designed to clip onto the uh, new kid size Proton Pack and just hang off of it. So if you actually look at the uh, back of the package here, I'm going to grab that real quick. Uh, you can see that there's a little diagram in the bottom that says, hey, here's how to clip it onto the new Proton Pack. Check it out. So um, so this is definitely role play stuff for kids. Uh, most of us who are grown ups are probably not going to run around with this on our Proton Packs and things unless you do some cool stuff to modify it. Uh, but it's cool. There's stuff out there. You know, I mean, there's new kid stuff coming out. And that to me is very exciting because it means that like this is the beginning scratching the surface of new 
uh, stuff from a new film, new props, new things to play with, the kinds of things that we had when we were kids, uh, proton packs with giant pool noodles on them and stuff. This is the new wave of that, and that's kind of neat. So uh, for 15 bucks, it's not a bad thing to pick up for your kids. It agrees with me and wants you to buy one, so um, go out and get one, and uh, keep on busting, everybody.